so excited because this case is made specifically for this. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not In Our Sec. If you own Raspberry Pi 4, you're probably as excited as me right now because you can get rid of the SD card and start booting it from USB, well, in a very easy way. It was developed a couple of weeks ago, but now suddenly it becomes quite easy to do and you can do it in 10 minutes and this is this guide. All you're gonna need is two things. First of all, you're still gonna need the card to get the process started, don't worry, later on you can remove it. And the second is a USB a medium of your choice. You can, you can do it with a USB stick, but I wouldn't recommend it. You can give it a try until you get a proper hard drive, but then I'm gonna be doing it with an SSD, or you can go for more exotic choices, like for example, M uh, SATA drive with the add-on on. There is a similar card for M.2 drives as well. So the choice is yours, and I'm going to link those uh, options also in the description of this video. So let's get started. To make it all work, you have to download the latest Raspberry Pi OS. So you can pick either the light option or full version. I've picked the light and uh, I'm going to write the card. Now the EEPROM boot uh, procedure is described also on the Raspberry Pi forum. I'm going to include the link in the description of this video. Now once you've got the card ready, I'm uh, just going to click quickly create SSH file to enable SSH. So we could actually uh, connect to the Raspberry Pi new installation. Now all commands gonna be in the description. We'll start with update. Then once the update is done, it's uh, important that you do the full upgrade. The Y flag means that we don't have to okay um, the procedure meet way through. Now once this is also done, uh, I'm going to uh, take a look at my drives. Uh, I don't have a hard drive connected at this point. But I'm just going to use the LS uh, BLK to list everything connected to USB. And uh, as you can see, I have only a SD card right now. If I plug the disk in, I have a disk also ready, and that's uh, SDA 1 and 2. There are some partitions, and I want to get rid of them first, so I could have a clean disk. So I'm going to use fdisk, then dev slash SDA to access it, and then use the D option to delete the partition. Uh, partition 1 and 2, so both I need to delete another partition deleted and then create a new partition with P. That's going to create a new partition and save everything using W. Once I've sorted my hard drive, now I can just investigate if it's okay. So LS, BLK, again, everything is looking okay. I've got my drive as SDA. That's going to be important for this, so bear that in mind. Now it's time to reboot the Raspberry Pi. Now. To get started, we have to switch the firmware uh, channel. So navigate to uh, the RP EEPROM update and change this status from critical to stable. If you're in UK, it's strong and stable. Right, once this is done, control X and enter to save it and navigate to this directory. You'll find in that directory a couple of files. If you go for LS, it'll list all the files and there is a latest uh, Pi EEPROM. Now we're going to use this with this command to um, actually load these defaults. So this is the command on the screen and you should see something like this popping out on the screen. Now we need to copy a file system to our USB, the drive for, and this is the procedure uh, described how to do it properly to resize it. But I found actually a repository on GitHub that uh, neatly take, takes care of this and that's what I'm going to use. So I have to first install the Git. Uh, on my Raspberry Pi. Once I have Git, I can clone this repository uh, onto my machine. It's a very small and lightweight and very useful for cloning your system. And I can start using it. So first I'm just going to uh, set it up, just navigate to directory and then uh, launch this uh, setup process. And it's gonna be working for you. Just remember to set the path uh, correctly, otherwise it won't work for you. So this is uh, important. But, but and once you've got this, all you have to do is just go to that directory and then select your drive with the RP clone dash L SDA in this um, example. It's going to take about three to four minutes. You have to uh, confirm that this is what you want to do. You can confirm, you can see that uh, the both partition, the boot and the root is going to be resized to a smaller uh, number as well, which is nice. And that's the purpose of it. So you could keep the file system small. 
Now you can uh, uh, have uh, options in here, which I just left it at default. And the procedure, like I said, it's going to take about three to five minutes. Uh, after which it will ask you to actually uh, confirm this. So you have to hit enter and you are ready to do a power off. When the device is switched off, just remove the card, boot it up. And if you do LSP, okay, you'll see that there is only one drive listed and that's the SSD I'm using, which means you successfully just boot it uh, from USB on your Raspberry Pi 4. Congratulations! As you can see, my NAS drive is spinning away right now as we speak. It's booted from the USB and I'm super happy. Now I'm gonna continue my work on the enclosure itself. And if you're interested in add-on to Argon One case, there's an Argon One review in here if you want to watch it. And then follow me on social media and you'll find out more when the file is available to you. So I do not have a posting schedule, so if you're interested in updates from myself, it's best to follow me on one of the social media of your choice or use YouTube for notifications. I'm pretty sure you know how to do it by now. So thanks so much for watching, I hope that helped you a lot and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye!